At the ripe age of nine, I was given the offer to have an all-expenses-paid nose job for when I became older. You know what? Let's make it fun for everyone and call it one of my earliest battles with beauty. On that glorious, destiny-ridden day, I had to go to a family gathering. It was during lunch and I was mid-conversation with a relative when she suddenly stared long and hard at my face. It was like that one look that kids give you, like a full-body scan, I guess, before they ask you the most uncalled-for thing ever. They'll say something like, Um, so, were you born ugly or did you choose this lifestyle? And start doing back shifts like it was some pre-show warm-up. Well, that kind of did happen, because after her supposed examination, she looked up at me and told me, It's okay. I'll help you get a nose job when you get older. And then she just starts backflipping out of the room. Except she didn't. I made that up. No backflips followed. Sadly, at least the kids gave me some form of entertainment. And it was really weird too, because damn, how did you manage to both help me and insult me all at the same time? I never realized that there was something wrong with my nose. And it wasn't until some years later that I finally understood. My nose was normal, sure, but was a bit too flat to be considered beautiful. The problem was that my nose wasn't high enough or shaped well enough in a neurocentric way in order for it to be beautiful. And that's weird because I would consider my nose to be a typical Southeast Asian nose. How does something that is so common in our race and society becomes ugly in our eyes? This is one example of the harmful standards in beauty. And I guess why it's harmful. Our current standards now are either too confining or for fetch. They're also changing at rapid speed. We all see beauty as something special that sets people out in a good way. But with the pressure of it becoming a norm, It loses its magic, and people search for something else. And this cycle just repeats over and over again. So I guess, in conclusion, as we all know, beauty standards are bad. And I did a seven-minute long talk about that. But here's another story, a more recent one, actually. About a month ago, I received a package of makeup that I ordered. I was telling my friends about it, and my devious schemes regarding them when one probably jumped to their feet just to tell me it was basically contradicting my original TEDx idea. My mind went blank. Oh cool, I guess I'm a phony now. But that really made me think. I know everyone has heard the general ideas surrounding these discussions before. Your natural self is the best, conforming to beauty standards is terrible, Open your eyes, don't be a sheep to societal norms, birds are actually government drones, whatever. But when I made those choices regarding makeup, I didn't feel terrible. I didn't feel like I lost my sense of self. I was still the same person, with or without, and I was still very happy having fun with those things. So wait, what should be our standpoint on beauty standards and following them then? In our battles with beauty, we tend to view the existence of standards as this ultimate final boss type villain. And with that, it seems like a no-brainer to have our knight in shining armor be having no standards or not following any standards at all. It's like that same logic that if you feel pain when you touch some body part, the solution should just be to not touch it. But isn't all of that also a standard? Also, I feel like we're kind of underestimating how hard breaking out of standards actually is. It just requires more standards because eventually we'll all see something as fitting. And if falling into those standards makes you feel good and doesn't harm you, wouldn't having to break out and conform to other things be more harmful? It becomes a strange paradox. Standards or inevitable. So I guess this night kind of sucks. Besides, 
standards are actually needed and could greatly benefit us. I see them as like a common baseline, right? Like a skeleton or a starting point for us to alter and build up in order to achieve individualism. Some very common standards could be ones that promote health or beauty methods and beauty choices that doesn't endanger anyone. Of course, those are needed. Look, even with nose job, did you know that nose knobs or rhinoplasties actually has medical benefits and could help someone breathe better? I didn't. So go change your hair, your clothes, your style into whatever you want and whatever makes you happy, as long as it doesn't hurt you or anyone around you. That's how we can apply these basic standards into our own needs. No one's ever truly the same, so personalization will always persist along with these very basic standards that we should have to ensure a healthy and non-damaging lifestyle. At this point, you and I both know that this storyline has to be changed. So who is actually the big scary enemy? Well, I fully believe it's our own extremities, either with or without standards. We are confining ourselves and others around us. We have lost the true benefits of standards to the point we fear them. We have been looking at the problems in beauty in such one-sided way that it became kind of twisted with supposed solutions that led us to nowhere. So next time, before you pick up your weapons and embark upon your treacherous journey and quest towards the battlefield of beauty, take a step back and think for a bit. Are beauty standards really the true villain of this fight? I thank you for your time.